Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have some Fantasy Cup battles in the Great League for you guys. And I immediately sat down as soon as the cup launched and I started playing these battles. So these are from when it first came out. So the meta I was seeing when it first came out is a little bit different from what I saw a little bit later. Because I played like three sets really early in the morning when it came out at 12. And then later I had the two other sets that I played during the day. I was seeing a few other Pokemon lineups. Now when I started, I tried to use Mawile, but I got destroyed by Turdinator, and I also got destroyed by Azu and Flygon. So I decided to remove Mawile from my team. I also tried to Dene a little bit. It also wasn't great. It was pretty nice against Azu's, but it still needed shields because it's pretty frail. So in the end, I just resorted to the double water line that almost everyone is using. Almost every content creator is using a double water backline. So I am using Escav on the lead with Acid Spray. My friend pointed out to me that Acid Spray would be good for the Azus. Big shout out to him. His channel is called GBL101. So if you guys want to check it out, he did a deep dive on this cup. And then I'll have Azu on the safe swap, which is pretty good against most of the meta. I'll use it to draw out the Registeels. And with Hydro Pump, you can actually sometimes take Switch. But most of the time, you're just going to let the Azu go and have Escav come in and farm down and have a ton of energy for whatever is in the back. And then my closer is going to be Tapu Fini. Now, Tapu Fini and Azu are going to be very good against a lot of Pokemon, a lot of Steel types that are going to be weak to water, and they're going to be good against Flygon and Turdinator and the counter users like Lucario and Escav. So that's enough rambling from me. You guys have seen this team everywhere probably already, and I'm pretty late on posting the video. So let's just get into these battles. Up first, we are going to see a Flygon on the lead. Now I was still learning these matchups. So what I do here is I go ahead and I catch the Scorching Sands on Azu. But what I didn't know is that Flygon can flip this. They just need three Scorching Sands plus the Mudshot damage and that will easily take Azu out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw a play rough here, but of course my opponent is going to shield. They can easily flip this, and they're going to go for a third Scorching Sands, and I actually don't want to invest a uh, shield because I feel like I need it for my backline, which is going to be squishier. Now, I can take this Flygon out here with Escav and have a lot of energy for whatever, uh, whatever comes in, and I don't want my opponent to know that I have Tapu Fini in the back because I was expecting them to have an Azu in the back. I'm actually expecting Azu on every single team that I'm going to face. So I want the Azu to be here up against my Escav. I'm going to go ahead and shield the Hydro Pump. Good thing we shielded it and my opponent has a Stunfisk in the back. We got lucky. The swap into Azu wasn't the greatest play, but we got really lucky here that my opponent's backline is something that I can counter with Tapu Fini and with my Escav, so we're going to easily take that first win. On to the next match, we're going to see an Azu lead. Now, I am going to throw the Drill Run first before I swap out into my own Azu, because if I swap into my own Azu immediately, I'm going to lose if they decide to stay in, because the opponent Azu is always going to be one fast move ahead of me. So. I land the drill run and now I can swap Azu and we draw out a Registeel, but if my opponent had decided to stay in with their Azu, I could have won that matchup. They bring the Registeel here, that's perfect for me. I'm gonna go for the Hydro Pump. We also, it looked like we didn't get the attack drop on the first Zap Cannon, so I was able to land a Hydro Pump that did full damage, and my opponent goes for a Focus Blast on the next move, and we live with 1 HP, so I go for another Hydro Pump and I'm actually able to take the Registeel out. Now this time when my opponent brings Azu back in, I'm going to go for the Acid Spray because I expected them to shield. They still had two shields and their Azu was in the yellow, so it made sense for them to save it if they wanted to. And my opponent has a Stunfisk in the back. Tapu Fini is easily going to be able to take care of this. Now they do shield the first Surf, which is completely fine. That means they have no shields left for their Azu, and Azu is still very healthy. I'm going to go ahead and double shield my Tapu Fini, and then I'm going to farm the Stunfisk down completely and have a ton of energy for Azu. Now here I throw the Moonblast immediately, thinking it, it is going to KO, and that was actually bad timing. It doesn't KO, but luckily I am able to get to a Surf and take the Azu out. I was even going to be able to take it out with the Water Guns alone, but GG's to our opponent, we take that win. 
But moving on to the next match, we are going to see a Melmetal on the lead. Very interesting pick, but unfortunately for our opponent, we are going to counter it with our S-Cav. Now my opponent brings in Azu, so I'm going to throw the Acid Spray and then I'm going to swap into my own Azu. This way, two Hydra- or sorry, two Play Roughs will take the Azu out, whereas my opponent is going to need three to take me out. So we're going to be in a good position here. I'm going to let this next Play Rough go and I should be able to reach my next play rough before my opponent can reach another move. However, my opponent decides to save their Azu for some reason, so they shield it and then they bring in Melmetal and they have to go for a move here. They can't farm us down completely because I was going to reach that Hydro Pump. So they throw the rock slide. I'm going to bring Escav back in, shield it, and then go for a drill run before they can throw another rock slide. Rock slide will hurt Escav because Escav is part bug type, so it is going to be neutral. Escav is also squishy. I have to shield it. And my opponent has a Terminator in the back. Overheat actually hurts Tapu Fini, and I learned this the hard way. Now here I'm going to attempt to water gun this uh, as you down. We're able to do that successfully. And my opponent still has one shield left, so we're able to take it with a Surf. And then we reach a Moonblast, and we're going to be able to take this Terminator out with the Moonblast. I would not have been able to take it out with the uh, Surf. Terminator is actually pretty bulky and they would have survived the surf if I went for that. That's why I had to go for a Moonblast. But moving on to the next match, we are going to absolutely get destroyed by the Shenotic. It is going to be resisting the counters from Escav and my entire backline is going to be weak to it, so that is unfortunate. But my opponent swaps into Flygon after I throw the Acid Spray. They also let the Acid Spray go, so I'm going to bring Azu and this is where I learned that Azu is not great against Flygon, especially since this one has Earth Power. I'm going to be able to survive two Earth Powers, but my opponent is going to go for a Dragon Claw here before I can reach another Play Rough. And they're going to be able to take us out. And now I'm going to bring my Escav back in for this. I'm going to try to farm it down completely and have energy on this Escav for whatever my opponent has in the back. Now, unfortunately, my opponent is going to have a Turtonator in the back. If I threw two counters here, I would have been able to take that win. But I threw it really bad timing. And then I bring Tapu Fini in and this Shenotic has so much energy. They're going to be able to reach two Seed Bombs. I'm going to go for a Surf take their final shield and I go for another surf, but we see MP tie and I actually don't know the counts for Seed Bomb and Astonish, it's running Astonish. So I no bubble it, hoping that I could get a little bit of energy on Escav, but we're not able to make a move. The Terminator is able to take us out before we make that drill run. So GG's to our opponent, they take that win, but also I played that really badly. If I played it a little bit better, that match would 100% have been mine because that Turtonator was one counter away from being KO'd. Now moving on to the next match, this is another Pokemon that kind of destroys this team, especially if I'm not able to land the drill run. This Sedene massively outpaces uh, Escav to a move. It is going to get to the discharges really quickly, and I'm not going to be able to reach these drill runs fast enough to take this out, and they are going to infest both shields to save this thing. And I have two water types in the back, so it's not looking good for me if I can't handle the Sedene with what I have. So I let the next discharge go on Escav. It leaves it with one HP, so I swap out into Azu. I take the first discharge, and then I'm going to shield the second one because I really need to get a play rough off on the Sedene. And I throw it immediately, and they catch on an Escav. Really well played by my opponent, and I'm not going to be able to make it to the Hydro Pump. They're going to get to that Drill Run, and I'm just going to get to this Play Rough. Now this should leave the Escav in a decent range for my Tapu Fini to come in and farm down. And I know that my opponent has a move on Dedene, so I'm going to wait a turn and then catch on Escav. We make that beautiful catch, and that is going to be the reason we are going to win this game. I'm going to be able to reach the Moonblast before this Lucario can reach a Shadow Ball take it out, and then we're going to water gun this Zedene down before it can reach another discharge. GG's to our opponent. Moving on to the next match, we're going to see another amazing lead. Escav is going to double resist the bug bites from that fortress. Now, before I swap into my own Azu, I am going to acid spray this thing because like I said, because they have a little bit of an energy lead, they would be able to win this mirror match. But now I just need two player offs to take them out. They need three to take us out. So we're going to be in a good position to maintain alignment. And I don't even need alignment anyways because uh, Tapu Fini is also going to be doing well against that fortress 
It also resists the bug bites. The earthquake and the mirror shot will kind of hurt, but that's okay. We are also going to be able to reach a move on Azu against this fortress because this mirror shot is not going to be enough to take us out. I'm going to be able to throw this hydro pump and they let it go. They live with very little HP. They're going to go for just a mirror shot on our ASCAP so I can easily let this go. It doesn't do too much. I'm going to be able to farm them down and then my opponent has a turtonator in the back and I have two shields left for my Tabufini now. I'm going to go ahead and shield the first flamethrower. I thought it might be an overheat. Interesting choice for my opponent to uh, be running flamethrower instead of the overheat, but I guess that makes sense. And now you are going to see how powerful Turtonator is in this cup because this is a fairy and water type and that flamethrower did way too much damage and they're able to incinerate us down, which is not great for us. I'm going to bring Escav back in and here I mess up and I go for the acid spray thinking it was going to take the Turtonator out. Again, it is a bulky Pokemon. I should have gone for the drill run, but either way I was going to lose this because this Azu was going to be able to get to a Hydro Pump and take my Escav out. So GG's to our opponent. Moving on to the next match, we are going to see a Shadow Scissor on the lead. Very interesting choice. I am unfortunately going to have to shield these Night Slashes because they do way too much damage to Escav. And my opponent then brings in an Azu. Again, as expected, all of my opponents are having Azu in the back or Azu in the front. And as I've always been playing it, I'll go for the Acid Spray and then I'll swap into Azu so that I can take my opponent out with two player offs and they'll need three as always. I'm gonna go for a player off, take most of my opponent's health out and then I should be able to farm up a little extra before throwing the next player off. I'm gonna count and make sure that I'm throwing one move before my opponent can get to their uh, charged move. And now we should have energy for the scissor and I'm expecting my opponent to shield and I recognize that they are going to attempt to farm my Azu down and I can't take a Night Slash on my Ascav. So I'm immediately going to bring in Ascav and shield once and then I'm going to farm the scissor down completely. I'm surprised they didn't swap out, but then I see what they have in the back and it makes sense. They're going to have Lucario in the back, which is going to be very weak to the counters. And I go for that Acid Spray and I'm able to take their final shield and then Tapu Fini is able to clean up. So GG's to our opponent. On to the next match, we are going to have a really nice lead of Registeel and my opponent safe swaps into Flygon. Now I learned that I can't immediately swap Azu into this, so I'm actually going to take one of their shields with my Escav before swapping into Azu. I bring Azu in now and they are going to be less inclined to shield my uh, charge move from Azu because they would be at a severe disadvantage if they used both shields already in this match. So they're going to let their Flygon go and then they're going to bring Registeel in and they actually can't farm us down. So they have to go for a move here. They take our Azu out and then I'm going to bring Escav back in and I'm watching for if my opponent is going to attempt to catch. They have an Azu in the back. I'm going to go for a drill run just to weaken it and then I'm going to swap into Tapafini. I wasn't sure if I should go for the drill run or the acid spray, but because I thought my opponent wasn't going to shield, I felt like the acid spray would have been, or sorry, the drill run would have been a better option just to get them really low and get them into Moonblast range. Now, I also go for the Moonblast and I get the attack drop and it looks like my opponent quits here because I guess they just got fed up with the game. That's really unlucky when you get an attack drop from a Moonblast. It's so frustrating and my opponent is just going to make me wait out this match. They're going to make me counter this Registeel down completely, but we're able to take that win at least. So GG's to our opponent. I'm sorry about that attack drop on the Moonblast. That was very unfortunate. On to the next game, we are going to see a Sand Slash on the lead. It's looking very good for us, and my opponent brings in a Shadow Dragonair, so I'm going to swap Azu. Again, looking really good for us. Can you guys believe that I actually lose this match? Yep, yes I do. Now I probably should have done a little more damage with the Escav before swapping out into Azu, because now if I want to win this, I'm going to have to invest both shields. Now my opponent also ends up investing both shields. They go ahead and they shield the play rough here. I should be able to survive the next body slam. So I'm going to let this body slam go and I see that I can make it to another play rough. So I shield here and this is where I mess up. If I had this shield, I would have had a chance against what is going to be in the back. And what's in the back? Skarmory. So I bring Tapu Fini in and they're actually going to farm up to almost two moves 
before throwing a move on my Tapu, and they're gonna go for a Brave Bird here. They have a lot of energy on the Skarmory, and they're gonna go for another Brave Bird. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to counter them down. If I had one shield, I would have been able to win that. But unfortunate for us, my opponent is going to take that win. GG's well played and very interesting choice. I didn't think Skarmory would have play in this cup. It is uh, countered by a lot of things. Now before I go, I just wanted to say one last thing. I did play this team later on during the day and the meta had shifted a lot. I started seeing so many Slurpuffs in the back and Slurpuff is a big core breaker for this team. It has access to Energy Ball, which is going to be super effective to my backline. And it has access to Flamethrower, which is going to be super effective to my Ascav. I also started running the team ABA with Azu in the lead because I was seeing a lot of Azu leads. And so I felt like, well, I was seeing a lot of Azu leads and I was also seeing uh, some Turtonator leads, some Mawa leads. So I put Azu in the front. We're going to have to see how this team continues to play, if it's going to continue to work, because I feel like more people are going to be expecting it. I'm considering using Shadow Flygon in the back because Flygon is very strong in the current meta. But that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoy my videos, please consider subscribing. Maybe leave a like. It helps me out so much. And let me know if you try these teams and if they work out for you. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.